I've, I've written five simple steps that, that really helps, no matter who you are, what walk of life you're in. Number one, you have to own your own happiness. Uh, take it away from other people demanding that they make you happy. Your kids are not going to make you happy. Your spouse is not going to make you happy. A big house is not going to make you happy. Own your own happiness and be responsible for doing those things that bring joy into your own heart, independently of life and people and money and all of that stuff. Right. It doesn't necessarily give you a happiness. You have to take responsibility of that peace and that joy that lives inside of your heart and not inside of your stuff. People torment themselves by how they see their life. They've told themselves a story as if it were the truth when it is really a perspective truth. And sometimes you've narrated a story that you beat yourself to death with. Challenge your own story. Change the way you talk to yourself about who you are and what happened to you and what you're going to do in your life. You, you wrote the script. Change the story. Enjoy the journey, not the destination. A lot of us delay our happiness. When I get to this level, when I get my degree, when I get the kids, when I get married, I'm going to be happy. Enjoy the journey. Enjoy the whole step, the whole process. Every day that you get up to strive for whatever it is you're after, you know I'm a goal-oriented guy. Yeah, absolutely. But you don't celebrate when you get to the finish line. Celebrate all along the way. If you don't see yourself as valuable, nobody else will. Everything is about relationships. You're, first of all, your relationship with God. You're, you, that's a very important thing to have because as long as you know that there's somebody in charge, you don't have to bear the brunt of the responsibility and the weight of what's going on in your life. Yeah. You can talk to the boss, okay? Yeah. Number two, enjoy your relationship with yourself. If you don't like you, it makes it hard for me to like you. <laughs> You know, because people, when you walk into their atmosphere, they draw you into the cosmos of their own drama. And if they're full of drama without you, when you come in, you become hey. caught up in the cyclone of their drama. Yeah. Enjoy your relationship with yourself. And then anybody else who comes in, they enter into a party you already started. <laughs> you understand? Yeah, yeah. And then the, the relationship with your kids, the relationship with your spouse, the relationship with your friends, taking time to enjoy the relationships because there, there is no fruit. Nature teaches us that there is no fruit without relationships you cannot be fruitful by yourself in business in home Nothing. in life in church I don't care what it is you are no more than the relationships you surround yourself with and make sure that those are good ones balance work with play you can't do all of either one and be successful. And to those who much is given, much is required. And if you work really hard and you're a really diligent person, make sure that you do some play to balance your life out. If you play real hard but you don't work very much, you're gonna be fun, but you're gonna be hungry. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You, you gotta balance work with play. You have to balance that with your children. If you're always a disciplinarian, your daddy gonna get you when you get home. I don't wanna always be the police in the house. Yeah. I wanna be the fun guy sometimes. Balancing work with play call this not only for you to be holistic but for people to get a better perspective of who you are i get on my instagram and i put crazy stuff my kids die i, I just yesterday i put me sweating in the gym saying they said it's gonna be fun but it hadn't gotten fun yet you know yeah. you know to let people know that everything is not serious every day that's too much pressure we've got way too much pressure on us to be the people we were created to be you, you see if, if you go on a computer they have on a computer what they call default settings. So whether you're in Microsoft or whatever it is, whatever program it is, or any, any kind of program, it has a default. The default sets in the computer some principles and ideas to which the computer is committed. It does not mean that you can't function outside of the default. It just means that even if you deviate from the default, the computer will automatically take you back to default settings and if you don't want it to do that it's not it's more than changing the font you have to change the default so type for me where you at type we're going to show you something there is nothing as powerful as a changed mind okay now put it in the other way okay there's nothing as powerful as a changed mind. All we did was change the font. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We changed the font. And while we're typing, whatever we type in, this font will appear in this font. And it will appear that it has changed. But it really has not changed. Because the moment you go out and come back in again, it will come back up. 
back to default. This is how most people live their lives. Because their default hadn't changed, their situation hasn't changed. So, so when they're in church, change. When they're in church, they, they can get this going. When, when, when they're around certain people, they can get this going. When, when you sing certain songs, they can get that going. When you shout and leap, you can get that going. But when you go back home, you go back to default. So you're going back to default over and over again. And certain, when you get around certain people, you change. And, and you want to hang around them because as long as you're around them, you feel peace or you feel nice or you feel kind or you feel spiritual or you feel holy. That's not the problem. The problem is when you go back to yourself, you're stuck in the same pattern that you were before and you can't figure out how to break it. You've cried about it, but you keep going back. You've shouted about it, but you keep going back. You, you've even prayed about it, but you keep going back. And you can't figure out how somebody who cried for it and shouted for it and sang about it and started going to church on Sunday. And why does this still keep happening to me? I don't know whose prayer I'm breaking into, but I'm breaking into somebody's prayer saying, Lord, why do I keep going through the same things over and over again? I go to church now, I tithe now, I shout now, I leap now, and the Lord sent me here to tell you it's no problem with your sentence. The problem is with your default. Until you change your default, you will always go back to being who you were before because you have never changed your mind. You change your friends, you change your address, you change your phone number, you change the songs you sing, you change everything else, but you didn't change your mind. There is nothing as powerful as a changed mind. A changed mind. Oh. A changed mind. Whether you do it in 12 steps or one step, a changed mind. Oh God, y'all don't hear what I'm saying. A changed mind. There's some, there's some people in here right now that, that used to do drugs, all kinds of drugs, crazy drugs, strung out on drugs. People wouldn't believe who you used to be. Your old friends never thought you would ever get away. But one day you got sick and tired of being sick and tired and you said, wait a minute, I'm not just going to change my clothes. I'm not just going to change my address. I changed my mind. I completely changed. Yeah. There's some women in this church right now. You used to be easy. All they had to do was tell you you were cute. You were easy. One day my daddy rolled up on you and said, baby, I ain't never seen nothing about said, Wait, wait, wait. I changed my mind. Let me tell you something. If you change your mind, I don't care what comes up against you. I don't care who you're fighting. I don't care how big they are. I don't care how tough they are. There is nothing as powerful as a change. Let me tell you something that's better than emotions. Better than strong emotions. Better than strong emotions is a decision. I dare you to make a decision. If you make, the decision might not even have any emotions in it at all. The prodigal son was in the hog pen, surrounded by the swine, about to eat that that the pigs ate. And all of a sudden, the Bible said he came to himself. He didn't change his clothes. He didn't change anything else. All he did was change his mind. The pigs couldn't hold him. The pen couldn't hold him. The disgrace couldn't hold him. The embarrassment couldn't hold him. I dare you to change your mind. Everybody who understands what I'm talking about, touch everybody you can reach say, I changed my mind, I changed my mind, I changed my mind. 
Hitler Lamb will tell him it's my prerogative. It's my prerogative. I don't care if you don't like it. I don't care if you don't understand it. It is my prerogative to change my mind. Now, I'm going to show you something and I'll be done. Once you change the default settings and you have a new normal, there may be moments, rare occasions, that you find yourself typing in your old phone. And if you find yourself typing in your old font, the devil will come along and say you haven't been changed. But I'm going to help you out in here. This is how you know you've been changed. It's not that you might not mess up and do what you used to do. It's just that it's no longer your normal. And when it's no longer your normal, you will never go back to it like it used to have you. Because the moment you get out of the situation, you change back into who you're supposed to be. Y'all don't hear what I'm saying to you. Both the pig and the sheep can fall into the same mud, but the difference is in the default. The pig is defaulted to lack the mud. The sheep has a default that says, I don't belong in this mess. I might be in this mess, but I don't belong. Hold on, I may be in it, but I don't belong here. I got to get out of here. The sheep will cry and scream and yell and fight because it no longer belongs in the mud. So here we are. Here we are. Spiritual beings having an earthly experience. And once you change your default settings, life might make you worry sometimes. But if it's not your default setting, faith will rise up and drive your worry back and say, wait a minute, but God is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that ye may ask or think. Faith will stand up and say, don't you know the Lord didn't bring you this far to leave you? Faith will stand up and say, wait a minute, girl, you better than this. Faith will stand up and say, man, don't you know God brought you through too much for you to give up here and die? It's not that we don't get depressed. It's not that we don't get discouraged. It's not that we don't fall into sin. We may fall in it, but we can't wallow in it. The battleground between God and the enemy, between right and wrong, between success and struggle, between destiny or that which is derogatory, is fighting for your mind. Because in your mind are your default settings. As a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. If you don't change it in your head, you can't change it in your life. I don't care whether it's losing weight. I don't care whether it's going after a job. I don't care whether it's being faithful and committed. I don't care whether it's being honest and true. It has to change up here or it won't change anywhere else. There is nothing as powerful as a change mind. Culture programs our defaults, our environment, our associations. The fact that we were born in sin, we have a predisposition to be defaulted to depravity. Our circumstances all around us affect our default. But culture is nothing over Christ. Culture is an agricultural term, which simply means that which is planted has been encouraged to grow. And some things have been planted in you 
that have been encouraged to grow. The question is, are you willing to allow a new truth to be planted in place of past experiences and thereby change your mind? Or will you be imprisoned to live a future of weakness or ignorance or evil or fear, not because you don't want to be better. Esau wanted his birthright. He never got it back because he was unsuccessful at changing his mind. I have always been the kind of person you could just do me any kind of way until I change. Brother Smith, I was about, I think I was about eight or nine years old. My brother who just went, went back to the back and my sister were tickling me. They may not even remember it. They, they would tickle me. I was the baby of the family. They always tickled me. And they'd tickle me and they'd all be laughing. I was laughing. And, but I, I was laughing, but I couldn't breathe. And I didn't like it. And I couldn't get them to stop tickling me. So since I couldn't control them from tickling me, I decided I would no longer be ticklish. Mm -hmm. This is true. I decided that I would no longer respond to the feeling with laughing. Watch this. So I focused in my mind that it wasn't funny. They did the same things that they used to do, but I no longer responded the way I used to respond. And from that day to this day, 55 years old, I have no, no longer been ticklish because I used mind over matter. When I learned that about, as simple as that is, when I learned that about being tickled, I learned the principle that anything you focus your mind on, you can change. You don't like the way your life is going, you're the only one who can change it. Esau lost his inheritance his future. He was set to be in the lineage of greatness. He died in the lineup of mediocrity. Not because he wasn't predestined to succeed. He died like a fool because he refused to change his mind. You don't have to be an alcoholic. You don't have to be a failure. You don't have to be anything. You don't want to be if you ever decide to change your mind. Cry all night, it won't change nothing. Sleep with the Bible on your forehead, it won't change a thing. There's something in your life you don't like. If there's a set of habits that are being perpetuated in your life you want to change, then you have the power within yourself to change your mind.